Peters come from the West. Also have to say the our guest judge today. Also have to say the our guest judge to protect his professional reputation. This piano is actually going to be used in today's pop. So it's neither in its first use, nor I think is it in optimum tune. Now, almost everybody will know that Peter composes, that he sings, that he plays pop music. But everybody may not know is that he had a severely classical musical education. Peter, tell us something about it. Well, I, I started playing when I was nine. I've actually been playing for 30 years now, years now, years now which is an awful long time. And, and I went to the Guildhall School of Music and studied as a concert pianist, which is how I ended up. And uh, I did a few months of recitals and then joined a pop group because I wanted to learn about pop music. And now I combine all sorts of different kinds of music, uh, hopefully quite well. Well, we're glad to have it with you. Now, you probably noticed after the concert that in each arm you have been using at least 50 muscles, that each of these muscles would have been contracting once or twice for every second you would be playing. Well, unless you have for that, let me explain to the team uh, what we actually want to do. Now, what we want you to construct is, in a sense, a synthetic Peter. It's a piece of machinery uh, which you can wheel up to the guy piano which will come to rest over the keyboard, or these which can operate the keys, and which will play a recognizable piece of music that's recognizable by the judges and by the audience. You can power this piece of equipment, either mechanically in some way installed power, or perhaps more probably, uh, by some long liquid movement. It means you, you, you can turn a handle, or maybe, or maybe pull over. You can't modulate the playing by the means which you power. So, do you understand? Right, go and start tickling your eyes. <laughs> Now that you know what you're in for, do you feel grand, upright, or even highly strong? Cool down. <laughs> Stag furniture, what, what do you make? Uh, we make uh, popular bedroom and dining, dining room furniture for, through independent retailers. And what can you name and what sort of thing do you do? Uh, I'm James Blackburn, and I'm works manager at our Avery plant, and I'm responsible for all the piece of art for supply to our laboratory. Mm -hmm. I'm John Charles, I'm the production engineer for both of our factories on the bank. And Richard Hartburn, plant engineer, responsible for the engineering of both of the Nottingham factories. So woodwork is set, but turf has no terrace for you. must no, use not a lot of wood unless I suspect sure. this machine was going to be made of wood. How about music? Do any of you play a music instrument? John plays. A little. <laughs> what, what, what sort of instrument? Um, mainly the trumpet, but I have an organ, but I um, don't play it so much. So no stringed instrument? No, no. Well, at least you know about music and notes and so on. Yes. Well, I'll leave it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Two octaves or three or four, if we decide we're going to be mm. that ambitious. Mm. Shall we see? Oh, the man. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. Um, could I have your names? Yeah. Roger Bucknell. Eddie Green. And Tony Wilson. You're obviously musicians, are you not? Yes. In what way? Well, we all play instruments. Um, most, we all play guitar, first of all. But we, we've come together as a team of friends who, over the years, have all worked for or five guitars, making high-quality musical instruments. Mm. Um, Is it going to help you at all, think, in uh, building this? The guitar side, no. The music side, yes. And the practical experience of using these things, yes. yeah. Well, I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> I hope it goes well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Right then, mm. nice complicated tune, fellas. The problem mm. is he's making it making flexible enough. Yeah. Um, not flexible enough um, well, I lubrication, because this is going to go around fairly fast. You need, this is the one place where you well, need we some bearings. Mm. There, that huh? proper tube. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. But this, yeah. 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 this is the one place where you need a good bearing, because it's going to go around fairly fast. Yes, well, 50 to 1 is fast. Well, I, mean, I know, look, needles there. Yeah. It's been quicker than well. Yeah. 
Mm. You just have a look, have a look, have a look at your, at, at your drawing. Uh, only music shops, so can I buy one of these things from you? Well, as well. That, that's the trouble with more seriously. I, I, t I take it that you're all concerned with, this, with, with the sale of music yes. instruments. Yes, yes, I, I do. So you must know something about how it works as well. Sure. Who, who are you? I'm Jonathan Askey. What do you do? I, I run the, the music shop and the workshops. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, my name's Anthony Calvert. I make anything from a spinet to uh, files, loops, harps, you know, play my way to heaven. Well, <laughs> <laughs> from first principles. From the world of the basic bare raw materials, yes. Well, that should give you really quite a good start. <laughs> I don't know. And I'm Richard Wood, and I'm the early music shop quango. Single <laughs> 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 man quango. Right, yes. Yes, I administrate and do a bit of design. Now, the work what you've drawn so far looks to me remarkably like a music box. In fact, it's a weight of music box. I notice you've got a pu pulley in your right, hand, yes, which yes. looks like coming in useful. Yes, well, one thing which I think we think is important is that the, the whole action should be regulated with a given speed. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use the, the ancient musical box principle of having a fan. Yes, it's been governor. It's a governor. governor. Yeah, and you're going to have, have pins on here, right? Pegs, yes. Or pins, mm -hmm. yes. which will operate the, the keys directly, or...? Uh, yes, the, the, the four crumbs in the middle, and, um, and the, the, these pegs will have to be thought about. Well, I, you mustn't give too, away, too much of your design away at this stage, see? So, no, you're so, not going to... I want a special, I want a special for myself. OK. <laughs> Peter, I shouldn't think they will actually have an animated hand, will they? <laughs> Let's just try and get some of the technical specifications sorted out. To get a reasonably recognizable tune, do we get any idea how many notes they might actually have to play? I think you'd need, a, at least as a melody, you'd need at least six or seven or eight notes to actually make a tune. If you, um, what they play as in one hand, yeah. if they're going to be ambitious and play two hands, uh, they'll need chords of three notes. I would have thought in the left hand. Now, if you wanted to restrict the number of octaves, I mean, could they get away with two or three octaves in the middle of the piano somewhere? Oh, yes. I mean, it, yes, you can You can play in one octave, really, if you just wanted to do a tiny little uh, quiet little piece there. But, uh, but, you, wouldn't, you, but you wouldn't approve? Uh, it wouldn't. It would be the beginnings of a machine. It wouldn't be. <laughs> Well, look, let's try and divide the problem up into the, into the, into the components. Storing the, the program seems mm. to me to be the, the, major, the major problem. Yes. So what are the, what, what, how do you see you might go about that? Well, well I did a couple of drawings, and uh, I would work on the drum principle. Now, things like these canisters would make the ends of a drum. The, you'd have to put slats of wood between them. And you'd have pegs on the drum, which would knock an arm. That's the arm and that's the keyboard on a pivot, mm -hmm. which would send a, a rod, as this, for instance, a bit of dialing, down onto the key. Uh, probably put some cotton wool on the end. You have to put a gentle touch. Yes, to make it not to damage the piano. But uh, of course, you've got to turn springs under that, haven't you? Yes, I mean, if you set the pivot down, you've got to bring it back, obviously, and you've got to use some spring. That, uh, unfortunately, I think is a bit vicious. But, but the clothes pegs, which seem to me to be at the premium, the clothes pegs seems to contain a good deal of the mechanism which one might, might require. Yes, I think that would be uh, sufficient to bring the, the arm back. You don't want a very strong spring, you just want to bring it back up again. Uh, as an alternative, I suppose, to the, to the programming drums, uh, we've got some rather strong paper here, and a, a, a really ambitious team could think in terms of making a pianola with an unlimited length, length program. I think they'd need about four or five weeks in a factory, uh, with a computer as well, I should think, to actually work out where the notes go. But I think that our teams probably aren't going to be quite as ambitious in terms of correlating all the activities. Let's see how they get it on. Just have a piece of wood up here. And it uh, runs along here. And that can come as near as it can. Stick it to The drum 
cylinder is going to gather information to, to, to move the... In the form of pegs. In the form of pegs, yes. And the large pulley will turn a very small pulley, hopefully, quickly, with a fan blade on it. So by altering the pitch of the fan, you can uh, control the speed of this quite accurately. But what's the ultimate source of energy? The ultimate source of energy is a, a bucket, a bucket of water on a piece of string. So, so you're descending with bucket loads and go out here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. apply the force yeah. to the drill. And as that revolves, it will spin the smaller pulley quickly with the fan on to regulate the speed. And then you'll strike a mechanism. Yeah. Uh, it's it's, it's, it's <laughs> So, so it, it's the beginning of their music, I don't say, the piano or the speed, it will be two gallons, one gallon. Hearts of beer, yeah. <laughs> 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 Well, we've got something that looks like something. <laughs> Doesn't look much like a drum. <laughs> no, well, we thought at lunchtime about the drum. And then decided that it would give us a few problems. This is going to be a flat car that drops it down the down ground. Yes. So we've, we've got some of the difficulties controlling the rate. That's the thing we haven't really sussed out, but there are ways we hope we can do it. And then we have segments on the front or pins or this, as you may look at it, which will. Um, move fingers, and the fingers themselves will actually line up the top of the I see, so they're not going to be pivoted there, and they're just going to be... Well, they're going to be pivoted fingers. They will. Yeah. We're hoping to be able to control the, the length of the note as well. That's what we really want it to, rather than just a constant speed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I won't disturb you anymore. Okay. You should carry on. I'll give you a sword, you're standing on there. <laughs> as a sort of color clever graph in which we have time along this axis and pitch frequency along this axis. Certainly the pitch, but the timing, I think, particularly with my music yes. here, is a little bit questionable. But, but, but in general terms? In general, like, yes. yes. So if I turn this out on its side like that, I've really got a picture of the programming card that you're going to very soon. Very so soon. Can you just tell me a little bit more about, it, about the card? Well, we have decided that rather than work on perhaps the usual drum principle. We will, it is easier for us to mark it out in the, you know, as a car. Yeah. And so we're going to attempt to move this vertically and um, operate the keys from pegs from peg. so, 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 so if this was a correct musical notation, you would have a peg wherever there's a note on here. That's, so, that's right, yes. Well, it's, it's, it's very nice. It seems to me to be a very nice relationship between the way music is... So we hope to be able to see the music on our car when we finish. Right. Now, this is, so you're storing a program on there, and you operate the keys. Now, how do you, how do you actually transfer this motion to the piano itself? Well, I think this is the best way of explaining it, is that we, um, these are flexible keys so that yes. we don't break the actual pegs. So, 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 so these, your, your pegs come up past and flick these. Flick it, yes. and then the fulcrum here will act, and then play the note. Down. So if I, as it comes up, the peg, the peg come, I yes. the peg here, yes. and do that, and it's, you know, it's come up the other way, actually. Mm -hmm. I'll be yes. so, but push it down onto the key. Yes. And depending on how long you keep it down, it's going to sustain the note. Yes. Then you'd have to do the lower. We allow it to drop away from that, that, that being part of flexible. Yes. Oh, oh, thank you. But you've got a lot of clever electric clear note there in the studio. It's actually a piano corner because it's a small one equivalent. In a piano, the information about which key to activate next is stored in terms of holes on a wide paper tape. Here it's stored on a tape cassette. But this tape cassette doesn't actually store the music, it stores a program. This has to be, uh, listen to it for a moment. is exactly like a computer program. That actually makes this machine play something. Let's start it. Let's look at the 
works at the days. Each key can be operated by one of these electromagnets. There are many electromagnets, as there are keys, and we can see the actual armatures going up and down. In the corner here, there are big levels to the solenoids, which operate the pendulums. Now, this is all this machine can do. Stop this thing. Now, Peter, teach us something new. I could have liked this as All yours. Further training. Press record. Press on. Press on. Connected these two, and 
your brain. This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Is there anyone out there who still isn't clear about what you're 
One by one, the eggs roll off the conveyor to a moving belt. To a moving belt. The belt takes them to the candling machine to be tested. To be tested. A man looks at each egg in front of strong light. Good, clear eggs like these pass the test. This is how a good egg looks to the man at the candling machine. Sometimes he finds an egg that has a spot. The spot doesn't mean that it's a bad egg, but he takes it out. But he takes it out. This egg has a shell that might break. The man at the candling machine breaks out all the eggs like this. They will be sold as frozen eggs, or dried eggs, or powdered eggs. This machine separates the eggs according to size. The extra large eggs come off the machine first. Next, the large size eggs. Then, the medium size eggs. And then, small eggs. Each size is kept together as the helpers pack the eggs. Some go into large shipping cases. Some into cartons. The small end goes down, the large end up. Dozens of fresh eggs, cartons closed, sealed with a government label of quality and size. All eggs go into fiber cases holding 30 dozen eggs. This man seals the cases of eggs and they are ready for shipment. Every day, many thousands of eggs are wheeled out to the loading room for shipping. The covered truck protects the eggs from the heat of the sun. Hot sunshine would spoil eggs quickly. So that is how we get eggs from the egg farm. Eggs on their way. Perhaps the truck will go to the railroad station, and a train will carry the eggs to the city. Or perhaps they will go over the highway directly to the food stores where we may buy them. Clean and fresh and good to eat. Look, here is the new Band-Aid plastic strip with new super sticks. It sticks better than any other Band-Aid. The proof? Take a dry egg at room temperature. Touch the egg with any other Band-Aid. Brand X. Brand Y, Brand Z, not one stick. But a Band-Aid plastic strip with new super stick sticks tight instantly. Watch it again in slow motion. No pressure, yet we can lift the egg, even boil it. And the Band-Aid plastic strip never comes loose. Maybe you don't want to boil eggs this way, but you do want the extra protection of Band-Aid plastic strip. They take better care of little cuts and scratches. They stay put. Yes, even in hot, soapy dishwater. Neat, flesh-colored, almost invisible. Band-Aid plastic strips with new super sticks stick better than any other band-aid. Made only by Johnson & Johnson, the most trusted name in surgical dressing. Be sure you get Band-Aid plastic strips. She quietly manages so much of our living without our ever realizing there's a woman at work. Now, right from the beginning, we breathe and sleep and wake up with no more conscious planning than we used in sprouty teeth. Mother Nature controls many of our routine bodily processes through automatic control centers called glands. The story of menstruation really begins with one particular gland. It's located here at the base of the brain, 
and it's called the pituitary gland. In our childhood years, this pituitary gland concentrates on producing growth hormones, busy little messengers which circulate through the bloodstream. They order the various bones and tissues to get growing. And as a girl grows up from blocks to dolls to books, that means her body is obeying the orders issued by the pituitary gland. Of course, these orders vary among different girls. Some girls grow short, some tall, some heavy, and some slight. But there comes a time somewhere between the ages of 11 and 17, though about 13 is average, when the pituitary must turn part of its attention to maturing the body which it has grown. So it starts sending out a new type of hormone, a maturing hormone. And that is when menstruation begins, when these maturing hormones start coming down through the bloodstream to the ovaries. The ovaries themselves are glands about the size of almonds and locked within each ovary are thousands of eggs. Although these eggs are too small to be seen by the human eye, any one of them has the possibility of someday becoming a human being. Near the ovaries are the fallopian tubes, short canals which lead to the uterus or womb. This hollow pear-shaped organ opens into the vagina, which is part of the birth canal and is the external opening for this whole group of organs. So, as you see, there is a continuous passage from each ovary through the fallopian tubes, uterus, and vagina to the outside of the body. These organs function in a continuous cycle. The pituitary gland starts the process when it sends its maturing hormones down through the bloodstream to the ovary. Now one of the ovaries passes on order of its own. It tells us the ovaries make a big thing of the ovaries and mold and mold and mold and still 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 this begins to build up a second lining of somewhat velvety material. At the same time, an ovary is being maturing and growing in more and more, which is magnified here so that we can see it. About once a month, one of these tiny eggs passes out of the ovary and finds its way into a fallopian tube, where it moves along toward the uterus. If the egg is impregnated, which happens when a woman is going to have a child, the egg will stay within the uterus. Then the thickened lining will provide nourishment for the budding human being through the early days of its development. However, most, most eggs pass through the fallopian tubes without being fertilized. When this when happens, happens, there's no, no use for that potential that nourishment that in the building of the body. And so, in a few days, it passes from the body. This, this is the flow which we call menstruation. So, so as we know, so menstruation is just one routine step in a normal, normal and natural, natural cycle that is going on continuously. The time the period, period is usually, usually a lot of the way it is. However, it may be short for some girls, some girls, some girls. The soul is not going anywhere for three days or seven days. Yet each of these different schedules may be normal. For just as the pituitary gland or some girls grow short, some girls grow short, The important thing is that you should be fairly regular within yourself. Of course, a girl may be very regular in the first year or so, but after that, when her system is settled down into a routine, her period should always be about the same number of days as far as the last time of the same day as the last Try not to throw yourself off schedule by facing the higher and if your time goes seriously wrong, 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 wrong,
This is an egg, and this is you. It's also me. In fact, it's us. It's all of us. The story I want to tell you is about the egg and us. What kind of an egg it is and why it's important to us. This is a very special kind of egg. It's a nest egg. And a nest egg is a great thing to have around. You put it away and when you need it, there it is. It has a way of hatching out into wonderful things, like a trip abroad, or a new home, or a college education for the youngsters. And there's a very special thing about this nest egg. You're the strange one. I think I'll call the place the I'd like to do some special education. I'll just say it. I can't say the rules. So it's heaven that goes to tell me I was too busy. The preacher said that I was to shout, pay the well, and so on, and the papers. Perhaps I too wondered why anybody would pay five pounds for a piece of interest. So I said I'd see it. That man comes up, we'll never get some flicks. Do you really have to answer, Mama? Well, it's not that important. But perhaps we could tomorrow night. That I, 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 step, 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 step. <laughs> Do I disturb, Do I disturb you? you? I mean, can you get to work with me, done, with me hanging around here and all? I'd say you were, uh, slight, like, 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 you know what I wonder? I wonder how an educated man like me finds his own interest. Nonsense, we can't have any other. Don't go there, like uh, tea and crumpets, uh, like your jacket, doesn't it? Ah. But I'd like to see my visitor alone. Oh, of course. Oh, now, George, I'm not sensible. We don't know how much you mean to me. But in this case, well, this man lives in the neighborhood and is a talkative little buzzard. And people do like to talk about old bachelor professors. Run along now, darling. Funding for this program is made possible by the Corporation for Public Publishing and by annual financial support from viewers like you.